if your project looks like this, microservices in the backend, but the frontend is a monolith, then you might be able to develop features independently, but you won't be able to deploy those features fully independently. To achieve this, you need to adapt to micro frontends. Here's a simple and pragmatic approach to micro frontends, which I have been using successfully for the past five years. To demo the approach, I have prepared a simple web application, which will serve as the host for the individual features. The features A and B are realized as individual web applications as well. To keep the demo simple, we will completely ignore any backend. Instead, we simply simulate data loading from the backend using a timer. When we now run these three web applications, we can see that each application is fully self-contained. When I considered how these features could be integrated into the hosting application, I identified two key principles. First, features should be integrated only through a URL and should not expose any JavaScript API. Second, each feature should be able to use a different technology stack. To achieve these principles, we will use an iframe-based approach. Therefore, let's create a dedicated component to encapsulate the implementation details. We need to apply these attributes to the iframe so that the integrated application is fully functional and that the user does not realize the existence of the iframe. Let's also add a random ID to the URL to prevent the browser from caching. In the hosting application, we will import the fragment container and integrate it into the HTML template. To keep the tutorial simple, we will hardcode the URLs to the features. In production, we would retrieve these URLs from the backend, which would probably read those from some configuration. At this point, no change in the features is required. If we now reload the hosting application in the browser, we can see that both features are integrated and appear to the user as if they would be part of the application itself. But we can also identify one remaining issue. The content of the integrated feature UIs is not fully visible. To fix this problem, we need to resize the iframe when the data of each feature is loaded and visualized in its UI. The solution requires two steps. First, we add a resize observer to the main view of each feature. This observer observes size changes of the DOM element it is attached to and sends a message to the parent window for each change. When integrated in our hosting application, this will be the window of the hosting application. Then we will register an event handler for those messages in the fragment container. If a message is received from the origin for which the fragment container is configured, it updates the iframe height, which causes the iframe itself to resize. Finally, we need to apply these styles to get the iframe properly located in the layout of the hosting application after resizing. When we now reload the hosting application, we can see that the frames are properly resizing once the data is loaded in the feature-specific applications. Let's modify the project to use module federation so that you can compare both approaches and decide which is better for your next project. What is module federation? Module federation is a feature of Webpack 5. It allows multiple independently built and deployed applications to share code dynamically at runtime. Since module federation is a Webpack feature, we first need to switch the sample project from Vite to Webpack. First, we remove all Vite related packages. Then, we add the latest UCLI package, which is based on Webpack 5, so there is no need to install Webpack packages explicitly. Next, we replace the Vite config.js with a minimal view config.js. Finally, we move the index.html to the public folder and remove the main.js integration as it's not needed in this setup. Of course, we apply the same changes to the features A and B as well. When we now run all three applications and open the hosting application in the browser, we see that everything still works as expected. We start setting up module federation by importing the module federation plugin into the view config.js of each feature. We then configure the plugin to expose the main component of the feature app remotely. Let's remove the resize observer as it's no longer needed. In the hosting application, we use the module federation plugin to configure the features A and B as remote modules. We can now use the define async component function to import the components exposed by the feature apps. After that, we can use these components in the template as usual. 
When we start all three applications again and reload the hosting application in the browser, we see an error. Let's check the feature apps individually. Both are running fine. Let's check the URLs used to configure the remotes in the hosting app. The remote entry JavaScript files are delivered properly. Ok, we need to do some research. Multiple sources indicate that this issue is related to how ViewCLI configures Webpack and suggests to change the configuration of the remote modules to disable the split chunks optimization and to configure the public path explicitly. I tried auto and slash as public path as suggested by some resources, but that didn't work in this setup. So let's configure an absolute URL and restart the feature apps. When we now reload the hosting application we see, the script loading error disappeared. But as you can see, the integration is not fully working. The content of the feature components doesn't seem to load and the CSS styles are not properly applied. The issue of the CSS styles is kinda obvious. Both features use the same ID to apply its styles, but this ID is no longer unique after integration into the hosting application. Let's fix this by ensuring each feature uses a unique ID. When we now reload the hosting application, we see that the styles are applied correctly. When debugging the loading problem, I realized that the timer callback was still called, which suggests that the UI reactivity is broken. Let's do some research again to find out what is going wrong. Some people are reporting that they have solved the issue in Vue.js by using the Options API instead of the Composition API. So let's try that out by migrating both features to the Options API. When we reload the hosting application, we can see that both features work as expected. But this is not a nice solution, as it affects the internal design of the feature apps. So let's switch the features back to the Composition API and continue the research to find an alternative solution. It turns out, the problem is that our application runs three separate Vue.js instances. One for the hosting app and one for each feature app. To address this, we configure Webpack to use a single instance of the Vue.js library across the hosting app and the feature apps. Sharing libraries is recommended anyway as it reduces the size of the composed web application in the browser. When we now restart all apps and reload the hosting application in the browser, we can see that the loading of the feature components is fixed. However, the last loaded feature seems to take over the entire UI. When we inspect the DOM, we see that the app container is completely occupied by the last loaded feature. Could it be that the main JS of the feature apps is still getting executed and so the last loaded feature gets mounted to the app container? I tried commenting out the mount API call, but as expected, this didn't have any effect. Maybe we are facing another naming conflict, since the components exposed by the features are also called app. Let's test this idea by renaming the app component in both features to a unique name. We also need to update the usage of these components in the respective main.js file and the configuration of the module federation plugin. Let's restart the feature apps and reload the hosting application in the browser. Et voilà! Our micro frontend setup using module federation finally works. But actually, I'm still not completely happy with this project setup, because the preferred build system for modern Vue 3 projects is Vite. Can we use module federation with Vite as well? Would it be even simpler than using Webpack? It turns out that module federation is not yet included in Vite. However, there are some plugins available. Let's try out this plugin, as it seems to have broader community acceptance. We start again from the initial project setup, which was already white based and installed a white plugin for all three applications. The minimal configuration for this plugin is quite similar to Webpack. We import the plugin into the white config of each feature application and configure it to expose the feature's main component as before. In the hosting application, we also import the white plugin and then configure the remote modules, again quite similar to how we configured Webpack earlier. Importing and using the remote modules in the hosting application then looks exactly the same as with Webpack. Let's run all apps and open the hosting application in the browser. As we can see, again, the minimal configuration is not working. When we check the network tab of the browser, we can see that this time the remote entry JavaScript files are not even available. Let's try to access the remote entry JS files directly in the browser using the URL which we had taken over from the plugin documentation. Surprisingly, we are not seeing any JavaScript code, but we get redirected to the main page of the feature app. Research shows that serving the remote entry scripts is not supported by the Vite dev server. 
So to make this setup work, we have to build the feature apps for production and then use the write preview command to run each app from its production build. In order to still support hot reload in this setup, we install the concurrently package and change the preview script to automatically rebuild the feature app if any source file changes and run write preview in parallel. Let's restart all apps and reload the hosting application in the browser. The workaround seems to partially work. At least the remote modules of the features are now loaded. But we still face the same issues as with the minimal webpack setup earlier. The CSS styles are not working properly and the reactivity of the feature components seems to be broken. So without further research, let's simply apply the same fixes. Let's ensure that the IDs used for styling are unique and also configure the Vite plugin to share a single Vue.js instance across all apps. This requires support for top-level await, which is only supported when changing the build target to a modern JavaScript version. Let's restart the apps one more time and reload the hosting application in the browser. Et voilà! Now module federation using Vite finally works as well. The setup is quite similar to Webpack. For our sample project, it is only slightly smoother because the public path doesn't need to be hard-coded to an absolute URL and the features app component doesn't need to be renamed. When comparing the module federation concept to the iframe-based approach, I would conclude that module federation provides greater flexibility in sharing code across JavaScript projects. It also offers better seamless integration of remote modules into the hosting application, for example by sharing styles, states and libraries. Finally, since module federation integrates remote modules using JavaScript, it doesn't cause side effects on browser features like the browser history, which can happen with iframes. However, there are also some drawbacks. Since individual features are imported as modules directly into the hosting application, conflicts with CSS IDs, classes and library states can occur. The intuitive configuration of Webpack and Vite didn't work out of the box and required some tweaking. But this might not be a big issue once you successfully managed it for your project. The major concern I see is that sharing libraries across individual features, which seems to be even mandatory in certain cases to make the integration work, causes a tighter coupling between the JavaScript projects. This can become problematic when features need to use specific versions of shared libraries or when upgrading to a new major version that includes breaking changes. So when deciding which approach to use, it shouldn't be surprising that, as usual, it depends on the specific micro frontend design you choose for a particular project. If you want to integrate more independent features, possibly as individual pages, with little to no communication with the hosting application, then the iframe-based approach is probably the simpler approach. This is exactly the case in my project, so I will stick with the iframe-based integration as described in the previous video. On the other hand, if you want to integrate smaller components more seamlessly into the hosting application and even need to share some state, then module federation is certainly the way to go. Now that we have explored possible setups for modular frontends, how do we set up the backend? One answer you will find in this video.